My name is Rory O'Connell and I play guitar and sing in Bristol to Memory. And uh, how long have you had the band for? Uh, about 10 years now. So we've been touring and writing records and, and uh, just trying to live, live our dream every day for about 10 years. It's been great. Wow, been great. that's awesome. And um, what got you into music? Um, I would say growing up it, within my family, you know, my dad plays guitar and you know a couple of my aunts sing and so just it's always kind of been around me growing up um, and just trying to express myself you know and and find my you know you know my voice for what I wanted to do with my life so I think that was kind of the push for me. Cool. And where'd you grow up? Um, Orange County, Santa Ana. So downtown Santa Ana is more or less where I grew up. Nice. I'm from LA so Very cool. I kind of know that area. Yeah. 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 So growing up in Santa Ana, what were some of the challenges that you f you dealt with as a young boy? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I guess it was just a couple different things. It was just where I lived, where I had to I had to make sure where I was going. I mean, there was definitely some spots where I didn't want to end up, um, and you know, as far as just like. Um, gang life in, in the 90s in Santa Ana was a real thing for sure and so I guess just kind of being alert of where I was at and what was going on uh, my surroundings but I had no problems I you know I've I've loved living in the, in the city down there in Santa Ana and uh, it's been great but um, I, don't know, I would also say just kind of trying to find out uh, what makes me happy you know as a person really digging into um, what truly inspires me you know, to, to get up every day and make my, my life better, you know, and to really, um, you know, try to get outside of where I've been comfortable, you know, living, living around and, and moving around and um, just trying to really find a wholesome place for myself, I think, was the, the biggest struggle, you know, growing up. Mm -hmm. So I hear that um, as a child there was a lot of um, opportunities for going, into, going astray. Mm -hmm. Um, what was it like in the 90s, you know, with that gang kind of territory and people, ego? Absolutely. I mean, you just kind of had to make sure that you were comfortable with who you were. You know, it's all about, I mean, I think the most important thing that I learned from that atmosphere was just respecting people for who they are, you know, and um, truly being, you know, yourself and not pretending because that's when you got yourself into trouble. And so I feel like, and I think that overlaps throughout you know my life and um, and then now with my music that's a message that I try to portray just be yourself you know be true to who you are because you know most of you know when you try to get lost um, you know in in choosing wrong routes or trying to figure out ways that you know you know appease you but you know might not be the right decisions I feel like that's what makes you stronger and that what makes that's what makes us you know who we are today when when you say respect people for who they are, mm -hmm. uh, growing up as a kid, um, I know LA, LA is known to be diverse, yeah. but then there's also the underbelly of LA of, of diversity. Course. Of course. Uh, could you describe more about what you witnessed as a child? Like, were there any um, tensions that had to do with something, you know, like very, uh, obvious or superficial? <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. I mean, let me think about that. So just tensions in the, as an underbelly of the society. Yeah, with so much diversity. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I would say that it kind of just were, where I was at, you know, I had a lot of different friends from different areas, you know, and grew up in different, you know, households, um, 
kids on the street and then hanging out with kids that are living in, in mansions in the hills. And so like I had a, a big diverse friend group. And so within that, I definitely saw a different, lot of, lots of different characteristics, you know, personalities and, and what, you know, drives people. And it's kind of interesting because I did find and I found that, you know, like the most humble people are the people that came, you know, have, have the least, uh, least to offer. And so like that definitely gave me a really good understanding of, you know, humanity and the basis of society, you know, that we need to really appreciate, you know, those that don't have as much as others and really give back and to really try to, to equal that playing ground up because, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of hardships in this world and I feel like if we could all just figure out a way to, to find what truly matters to each other and express that and give that back to each other, we can all come to a better grounds. Yeah, yeah, I mean, definitely agree on that. Mm -hmm. um, as a child, were you, uh, did you ever experience, uh, well, before you hit puberty, I'm sure you shut up after that, but when <laughs> you were a little kid, yeah, yeah. were you, did you experience any bullying or any violence personally or? Um, yeah, actually, there were, yeah, there was definitely some moments, you know, because, uh, you know, I had really bad acne and braces and I was awkward and, and, um, middle this was, yeah, this was definitely middle school for sure. And I've always been really just kind of like trying to make friends with everybody. And so definitely there was points in my life where, or like I was the brunt of the joke and, and, you know, I, I ended up going to, um, like an all boys school in great in high school. And uh, that was definitely a brute of a lot of jokes, for sure. Um, and, but I felt like that's what kind of made me stronger as, a, as, a, as a, a growing teen, because that's absolutely the, the world we live in. You know, people are trying to make themselves feel stronger by putting others down. And I feel like if you can take that and absorb it and then just try to give back tenfold, I, I think it even makes for a better place. So growing up as far as getting bullied and, you know, um, definitely had my fair share of, of being made fun of. Uh, it, I feel like for me, it just kind of encouraged me to try to inspire those that, that don't have the opportunity to grow. Because for me, I took it all to music. You know, so any time that I was getting you know, put in the wrong mindset from other people, you know, and self-doubting myself and, you know, feeling, you know, just, just the pain of being made fun of and people laughing at you. I, I would take that and I would just kind of, I would create music for myself. And it's an interesting thing because I remember going from the kid that would always be kind of just left out on the side and writing music throughout that whole period. And then as I've gotten older, those people that were actually there back then that were not maybe so kind to me now or reaching out to me talking to me about you know like positivity of how life is and, and it's just an interesting pr progress of life and i feel like um that's why it's important to stay true to who you are you know and and i've i've always been like this interesting writing kid that's been just reflective and and i've continued as as an adult now and um i i feel empowered every day you know to to continue to live you know the life that I've chosen so yeah so I hear that um, you know growing up the kids that often derided or scoffed or whatever mm -hmm. now they've arced and now they're all about positivity they're coming back to you and Absolutely. reaching out um, so there's an arc for them right mm -hmm. um, have have you thought about your own arc um, were there moments where um, you weren't the way you are now? And what was that like? Could you describe a time when uh, it was tough and you didn't think you could get out of it? Yeah, I mean, I feel like we all go through these periods of time where we're tested. And um, yeah, I would say there was a really interesting time a few years ago where I felt like I was doing really well with my career and I was really, you know, my, my life choices were taking me where I wanted to go except I was being unfulfilled by it. And I was driving every day 
And this was about five years ago, I would say. And you know, we were touring, putting out records, and playing great shows. And for some reason, I wasn't being fulfilled by this nonstop like aggression for my for my music and and it was really strange because it was everything I wanted to do but at the end of the day I would get back from a long show or a long tour and just be empty and so the past two or three years I've been really trying to find where I come back into a positive nature and it wasn't until a couple of years ago and um, my aunt had passed away and um, a, I had a, just a few close friends pass away and life changed really rapidly in the last few years for me and it was kind of in those moments where I realized the fragility of where we are in this world and what's going on and it definitely was a wake-up call for me as far as being satisfied with my efforts and where I was at because it was just a trying time, and I think it kind of just took, took the most drastic things to really, you know, rip me from my, from my roots and put me, you know, back in the ground because, um, and I feel like we all, get, we all get in those places in time where we feel like we're driving, but at the same time, it's not giving us what we're, what we're actually looking for. And I think that just takes, you know, confidence in your mission and in what you're doing and also just being retrospective in your life and trying to find what is important to you and for me it was family and it was because what I was doing was I was just just music I was touring and not paying attention to anything else other than just my music and um, it was blinding though I was I was loving it and I was having a great time it wasn't giving me what I wanted and so it wasn't until I really realized that being with those that care about you and, and vice versa and giving that mutual love, it was actually giving me what I wanted more of it. And then that's what I started doing these tours. And the last couple of tours we did was music education tours. We would play these high schools and we would go around all over the country and talk to these kids about, you know, expressing themselves through music. And um, so the past like three years or so, I say it's just this big kind of like regrowth of myself and my positivity and you know I want to just share that with everybody that I can you know as far as just you know we're not alone in this world and um, it's all about just growth and everything comes together in time so. At what, at what age did you start performing? 17. And at what age did you really want to start touring and doing the concert? Probably like 22, 23. Okay. Something like that. Right when I graduated college. It was like right when I was graduating college. You actually did it. I was like, this is what I'm going to do. Because you know, the whole time I was planning on being a teacher. Oh, wow. So I was going to college to be a high school like bio teacher. Wow. And um, I graduated and then you know the band just kind of started doing more things. And, and I just kind of just continued with that path and then it was weird because it was in that time period where like right after it wasn't giving me what I was like hoping to get out of it and so um, it's just been an interesting growing period for sure and I feel like now it's all kind of coming back to where I want it to be so yeah so you had friends pass away mm -hmm. uh, at what age did you experience your first friend passing away, like close friend that really impacted you? Uh, I was 24. 24. It was just a string of a few years of like a couple, like a couple grandparents, a couple friends, an aunt, um, all in about like three years. Yeah, it was pretty close. And so, and I was probably about 20, from like 23 to 25 when all that kind of happened. And during that time, you were getting serious with your music. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think I was kind of missing out on some of those things just to focus on my music. And because I knew that, I thought that that's what I needed to focus on. You know, I needed to just kind of push everything aside and focus on, you know, writing music. But at the same, as you found out, yeah, it wasn't giving me what I was hoping it was. And so it was really interesting for me to be, you know, 
pursuing my career happily and you know pushing forward but it wasn't wasn't giving me what I wanted and so it was like this internal regrowth you know maybe when I was 27 up until now so I'm 31 now I'm thinking if you don't mind me kind of I'm not, first off, I'm not a psychologist at all, but yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> I'm about to like go no, in deep cool. with you. Um, it sounds to me that you, you've you always been used to taking music, uh, taking pain um, and turning it into something deep with mm -hmm. your music. Mm -hmm. So it almost sounds to me like during the time in your 20s, in the three year period that people were leaving mm -hmm. um that was your way of processing uh in a way and also your a way to in a way avoid it absolutely yeah yeah completely kind of pushed everything away by just focusing on my music yeah and then in turn i wasn't being fulfilled by it because i wasn't really focusing on what was important the people that i was you know, surrounded by that were supporting me so it sounds to me like there's a space, uh, a void that still needs to be um, addressed. I believe mm -hmm. in that, in that loss yeah. um, of the people close to your life, mm -hmm. maybe like existential um, confrontation with yourself. Mm -hmm. um, do you believe that since then you've addressed it, or do you think it's still yet to be addressed? I, I attempt to address it, but there's definitely issues for sure that I'm working through, you know, um, absolutely. And, uh, but with that being, you know, said, I feel like I'm in a better place than I've ever, you know, the best place I've been since, you know, those moments. So um, it's something I'm still working through for sure. See you guys ready to rock it up with my time! to um, just like backyard punk rock shows like that was what I would try to always like spend my time doing you know and hanging out with um, you know skater kids and, and rocking out and that was kind of what I what I was doing when I was younger and um, definitely seeing that you know being around that and the fun and everything that came out of it was inspiring to me for sure and I remember being like 13, going to my first show at a venue and just being blown away. You know, just being like, this is the most incredible like energy that I've ever experienced. And so it was soon after that I started learning guitar. You know, probably a few weeks after that I went, you know, and, and got a guitar and, and started plugging away. And I, uh, yeah, you, you mentioned earlier the process. And it was interesting because I, I immediately became hooked like the second I picked up a guitar. And 
I remember I would sit in my room every night and I would listen to some of my favorite records on like a disc man and I would push stop and play and I would find the chords you know and I would spend like an hour trying to learn this song and then I would f slowly figure it out and so I would do that for just weeks on end and I would just sit there in my room stop record figuring out songs until I could like have maybe five six songs and then I remember like going to my friends at school and be like check this out I can I think I can play you know some some stuff and then we started throwing backyard shows and then I started doing that when I was 16 so it was kind of this cool transition for me to be in that that environment you know and then start writing some songs and then go ahead and create that environment for myself and so that's kind of been my vision ever since I was you know in high school just kind of create your manifest your reality so that's kind of where I've been at uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, as a teenager or even younger than that, um, you was 13, you went to your first punk rock show, like yeah. live. Mm -hmm. What was it about the experience that made you decide like, okay, I want to be that guy on stage? What was that experience? Uh, what was it about the environment or maybe the people or maybe the, the energy? Mm -hmm. um, when we think about punk rock, when I think about punk rock, I think about like, you know, like just raging. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it was maybe my environment. You know, I, you know, growing up in a household where my dad was very strict, and um, and, my, and my mom was just like the most giving person, but like you know, she was very strict in her her own mindset. And so I think for me, it was just I could just do anything I want. You know, I don't have to abide by any rules, you know, and I can create what I, you know, create my own rules, you know. I, um, I think that's what it was. It was just the whole understanding of becoming anything you want to be, yeah. you know, in, in any moment you choose. So just the freedom that those experiences and so. Um, Were you a good kid? Good? Club? I was a good kid. Yeah. I was a good Were kid. I was a good kid. Like a good good kid. Grades and no. Turn in your Oh, absolutely not. Oh, okay. Um, what kind of kid no. You had to assess yourself now. What kind of kid was I? Yeah. I was, um, I guess I was a little bit of a troublemaker. Just small bands. I was the kind of kid that was always into these small, small groups, and whenever they would get on the radio, I'd be like, oh, that's not cool, man. That's not punk rock. Uh, <laughs> I got it. I got so, it. So keep it indie, underground. It was more that, that was always, movement. Yeah, I was always into the underground movement for sure. Mm. Um, and uh, but it was you know nothing but good good times. But yeah. which leads me to the next question because this is this is the this is the dichotomy and the challenge for many musicians coming out or breaking out. Yeah, um, is that they appreciate and they have a it's 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 a it's a sanctification that it's underground and it's mm -hmm. unique and authentic mm -hmm. um and then the other flip side is like people who sold out to the industry yeah you yeah, know and then became mainstream and they become puppets of the mm -hmm. handlers in the music industry and mm -hmm. all that so where, where in that space of the two extremes, mm -hmm. or just two energy fields, of course. do you find yourself in conflict between the two? Because on the one hand, you, oh, yeah. do you want to get amplified of course. Of course. and make money with your music? With your music yeah. on, the, on the other hand, you don't want to be controlled mm -hmm. or told what to do. Mm -hmm. So what was that conflict like for you? Uh, in your process, it was definitely a very real conflict, and I've, you know, I still find a, a balance of the two, you mm -hmm. know, because what we've done as a band is we've continued to work with people that believe in our image and what we do as an art, and so um, we've just stuck with that. You know, we've had opportunities to do other things in the industry, um, and we've never gone that route, you know, because I feel like for me as an artist or as a just a songwriter or a singer. Um, if it doesn't make me feel good, mm -hmm. then there's no point, you know. I, I came to that realization a few years ago. If, if it's not driving me to, you know, want to create and to be as passionate as I can be, there's no reason for me to do it. So I still find a balance with it. And 
there was definitely a period where I was extremely conflicted um, with that concept, but you can still achieve your goals and work within the industry mm -hmm. and and um, have, a, have an even ground because I've met so many great creative people within the industry that believe in what we're doing in our music and it's never been a problem and so I feel like as long as you're true and stick to your guns you know and try to work within the industry um, you can you can have both you know you can be successful in creating your image and working with um, you know the marketing aspect of of what the industry has to offer because you need both to be able to to succeed you know? yeah so um, and as now I, I feel more confident in ever just because everyone that we continue to work with is is as creative as we are you know yeah. and it's as I get older you know I feel like that that mindset of just it's black and white um, is more of a concept of not understanding, you know, the truth behind it because uh, it's both sides are an art craft, you know. It's mm -hmm. it's you need one without the other, and so it's um, I think it's a beautiful thing you know, to be to be working with creative artists yeah. to, to pursue a common goal. I mean, the industry's changed too since the '90s. Mm -hmm. You've been doing mm -hmm. this for over a decade now, so yeah. you've seen the transition. Absolutely. Um, do you think it's better or worse, and why? I mean, I would say it's better in the sense where those that didn't have the opportunity to get out there can now. You know, mm -hmm. and if you work really hard and you believe in your music, you can get it out there. You know, um, and so I think. Absolutely, it, there are difficulties in the sense where record sales aren't the same. You're not getting the million dollar contracts that you were maybe in 92, but um, you have more opportunity and it gives more opportunity to the unheard voice. And I think that's really important. Um, and I, I love it, you know, for us, we're allowed to, you know, enables me to talk to kids all across the country, you know, after we've toured and to stay connected with people that believe in our music and our message. and. And it's, uh, I think it's really important, so. That's awesome. What's yeah. your message to the, to the high school kids when you tour? You went on a music education tour. Yeah, it was just believe in yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and, and just not to take uh, failure as, you know, an unsuccessful result because, of, you know, growing up, you're always going to fail. There's always going to be roadblocks in front of you. And so you just figure out a way to grow around those, move around them and, and achieve your goals. And so that was my main message and always has been just to be you, believe in yourself and continue to just create, you know, because that's, that's what we're here for. Awesome. So, uh, let's, so you're, you're about to um, come out with your second one, right? So this Actually, is first? that is our like third record. Oh, your third. Yeah. Apologies. Um, with, with, okay, so what did it feel like producing your first one? Let's, let's take, mm -hmm. take me through a history of your musical um, evolution, if you will. Um, first album, mm -hmm. what year was it, and what did it represent for you? My first album um, is an unreleased album. No one's heard it, and that was probably in 2006. Okay. Okay. And for me, that was the moment when I really realized that this is what I want to do. Okay. And it's not released because it wasn't done well, you know, okay. and Got it, it wasn't what I wanted to represent our music, you know, yeah. uh, where, where we want to be. So, but that being said, I feel like it was just a great experience for me to really get in the studio and um, just express myself, get behind the console, really yeah. feel it out, really inspiring. Yeah. And it's ever since those moments, those first moments of playing music, getting on stage, getting in the first studio, um, that made me want to continue what I'm doing because it really is such an awesome feeling hearing a melody in your head and then two years later you're listening to it, you know, on a record. Wow. Um, I don't know, it's just, it's magical. For me, I, it, it continues to, all, you know, awe and inspire me every time I'm in the studio so yeah, yeah. yeah it was a great experience so it was it was a failing upward experience 
exactly for the first exactly. album. Exactly. Like I was saying, I mean, every you know, every success has an unlimited amount of failures before it. So for yeah. me, it was just another another building block, you know, to continue my career as a musician. So awesome. And what about your second one? What was that like? That was, was great. That was really cool. Um, What's it called? It's called Light Up the Fire. Uh huh. And that was released in probably 2010, 2011. Mm hmm. And uh, it was with this, I was actually thinking about him yesterday. Tim Davis is his mm -hmm. name in engineering, Costa Mesa, mm -hmm. Orange County. Mm -hmm. And um, he heard our first record and came to us and said he wanted to produce that one. So he had built a brand new studio and we were really excited because he had all this brand new gear and. Um, he fronted for the record and everything was on his end taken care of and we were just really excited to be working with a professional you know close by our house and um, really believed in the project and we worked on it for a couple of years okay. and so that was um, that really started our first bigger single I Bet On You um, back in 2010 2011 and um, it was just an incredible experience that was the first time we really went okay we can we can actually make some real music so let's Let's dig even further. Let's dig even further into this. And so, toured that for about a year. Mm -hmm. Came back, went straight back into the studio. Put out another one called uh, Don't Hold Your Breath in about 2013. Mm -hmm. That was a four song little single mm -hmm. um, mix, and I loved it. That was great. Mm -hmm. You know, same thing. We just we put that out, toured it, yeah. and just went back in the studio. It's been that process for about 10 years. So then we came out with this record Animus here in 2014. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I'm hearing that you go in the studio, you put out good music, and then you tour it. We tour it. And exactly. then you do it again. That's yeah. kind of like the cycle. Yeah, it's the cycle. So let's talk about this one. Um, I can't pronounce it. I'm sorry. It's called Animus. 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 Oh, okay. Animus. Yeah. Now, what uh, Animus, I know what Anim Anima in Latin is. It's yeah. being alive, right? Absolutely. Uh, what is Animus? So that's the main concept, is it comes from the Latin term anima. Because mm -hmm. when I was thinking about this record here, um, it really represented a whole, you know, uh, maybe like a five year span of the band's music. You know, because we were writing the whole time we were on the road. Mm. And um, this is the first record that we self-produced, we self-recorded, we mixed it all ourselves. All the band members, we've known each other since we were in grade school. So I've known oh, wow. these guys forever. My brother plays bass. And that's amazing. You know, exactly. It's and, so unheard of. And, yeah, it's not <laughs> too often these days. Seriously. And, and so yeah, I've known all these guys since I was ten, mm -hmm. and um, we all grew up around the cross streets of Bristol and Memory Lane in Santa Ana. And so I remember when we were going through band names back in the day, we had a bunch of different ones, and and actually my sister, she came in and she was like, you know, Rory, why don't you? Um, why don't you name it about the cross streets, Bristol Memory Lane? So we're like, yeah, let's do Bristol to Memory. So that's where it all kind of stuck about 10 years ago. So was that where you, uh, your group practiced? Yeah, not? yeah, off of a studio not too far off of Bristol Memory Lane. So that was what it was. It was, oh, come over to the studio, come down to Bristol, to like take Bristol to Memory and, and another <laughs> left up the street and there you are. So That's awesome. <laughs> That so is so it's cool. Yeah. It's like a good marker, both in exactly. uh, location and also memory lane, mm -hmm. pun intended. Memory lane. <laughs> Burns it in, so. Wow. Yeah. Um, that's really cool. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, what during that period where you were experiencing loss, um, yeah. what what album was that, or what were you writing? That to, was the writing that of this was record. This one? Yeah. Um, so let's let's talk about kind of the paradox of the two you know mm -hmm. people were dying but at yeah, the same absolutely. time you were it reinvigorated you into living more yeah yeah absolutely I was trying to find myself you know trying to find myself to you know, where I am today more or less you mm. know trying to really put the pieces together yeah. and um, within the writing of those songs it was definitely embodied there just uh, just trying to take in humanity as a whole, you know, because mm -hmm. like you said, I was, in a, I was in a strange place and trying to really find my ground when I didn't, you know, couldn't really, you know, get a stable, stable place. And so, um, you know, within those lyrics, I was trying to embody all of that in one. Yeah, yeah. Which of the eight songs here um, kind of represents that, um, that, ability to embrace life mm -hmm. uh, because it's so short mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Um, I would say In My Head on that okay. record mm -hmm. is really good uh, as far as embracing that. You know, and then there's an acoustic track called Get a Grip. Uh -huh. um, that, is, uh, that definitely is putting that message out there. Okay, and what kind of experiences um, really inspire you to write? Is it happy moments, sad moments, awkward moments, or is there any preference at all? I'd say it's everything, you know, okay. um, absolutely. Like I've definitely, you know, been turning my pain into passion, you know, my whole life. And so um, for the longest time, that was my escape. You know, anytime I was feeling that stress, you know, feeling that angst or being alone or, you know, just trying to find myself, I would always turn to my music. And yeah. so absolutely, that's been a big inspiration for me you know, um, in my journey of writing. Yeah. And I feel like as of lately, um, within the past few years, you know, with my own transformation, I've been really trying to turn into more of a positive message as far as, you know, be thankful, you know, mm. be grateful for where you are and who you are and, and just express yourself. And so that's where I'm trying to turn the music to with, with this new record, mm -hmm. more on a, a more uplifting mindset and um, you know, that we can do anything we want, that we can achieve anything we you know, set our mind to. So. Amazing. Do you have a title for your new album? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. So um, all the tracks are set. We just finished recording, and okay. so um, actually, I should be getting a, a mix any one of these any day now. So wow. we'll be seeing seeing how it comes out. There's still more work to do. I still need to record a couple of piano lines and mm -hmm. um, a piano song here, mm -hmm. and uh, but for the most part, we're we're getting close. Yeah. So I'm excited. How do you choose your titles? What's the process for you? For me, it's kind of, I, I like to take the whole record in mm -hmm. and listen to it and try to come to an understanding of what it means to me. Because as I'm writing the songs, of course I have a, you know, an understanding of where I want the music to go and the message to go, but it, it kind of shows itself to me as it's happening as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. I try not to control it so much. And so sometimes when I'm done with the song, I don't even understand what I was truly evoking until I sit back and re-go through it myself and so in that understanding it keeps it fresh for me you know I'm under I'm learning about myself and my writing as it's happening and so with the record process I'd say that's more or less the same understanding where I listen to it and take it back and, and really find the core values of of what the record represents. Wow. Yeah. And um, let's go back to your touring experience. Um, yeah. What are some good, bad, ugly? Like, could you give me like the good, bad, ugly pretty much yeah. of touring? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You've done it for what, over six years now? We've been touring for about, yeah, like seven years or seven so. Seven years? Yeah. Okay. Um, absolutely. There's plenty. Yeah. Um, the good is just meeting incredible people all over the country, all over the world. Uh -huh. You know, you get a real good understanding of, you know, where your place is in society with everything else. Because here in Los Angeles, Orange County, Southern California, I feel like we're, we are very fortunate. Yeah. And there's so, we have so much, you know, around us that is to offer. But when you get out, um, you can just have a greater respect for, you know, uh, others in their, in their situation. And so... For me, that's what I love. You know, I really love connecting with with people. You know, and just to spread our music. You know, yeah. And that's why we do it. Yeah. And you know, I say the hardest part is um, just being on the road, being away from everyone that you truly love. You mm. know. Mm -hmm. And uh, but that's why I'm fortunate that I'm with people that I you know consider my family. You know, I've known my band members forever, and we're we're all in the same same boat, and so. Um, I love it. You know, I love everything about it. You know, Do you guys ever tear each other apart sometimes? Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Usually my brother and I. Okay. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. There's definitely that sibling angst still there. You know? <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, sharing, sharing long drives is, is tough. But, you know, I live for it. You know, yeah. This is what really makes me happy. Yeah. And um, I, feel, I feel so alive when I'm out there. You mm -hmm. know, so I, I continue mm -hmm. to... To, to dig my teeth any further, so. Okay, what about the ugly? Um, you know, I mean, sleeping on, I, I'm a tall guy. Uh -huh. <laughs> so like the last couple of tours on our bus, I don't, I don't fit in the bus. Oh so, <laughs> <laughs> so like my legs are sticking way out, you know, in the aisle. Um, Does it fall I, asleep a lot? 
you your know, legs. Yeah, of course, <laughs> nonstop. I can't fit anytime anyone's walking down. I have to like hit my legs out of the way. So that's kind of rough. But um, fortunately, we were you know sleeping. Mm -hmm. um, but you know that's tough for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. You know, um, getting up. You know, or like playing a show till three in the morning and then driving for eight hours is not easy either. You know, oh, to get wow. the next destination and then, <laughs> oh. you know, eating eating gas station burritos for a couple of weeks is not wow. not always the best either. <laughs> you know, but it's it's part of the it's part of the ride. You know, it's yeah. funny like when I go on road trips now, even like I just went out to Arizona to visit my grandparents a couple of weeks ago, and I'd gotten like. The tour zone, like okay, I gotta get my beef jerky. Mm -hmm. I've gotta get my Gatorade here. Like it's it's kind of funny. I go into these yeah. zones, but um, yeah, yeah, and it's it's interesting. But uh, you know, it's it's a fun ride for sure. Yeah, let's talk about relationships. If you mm -hmm. don't mind, mm -hmm. uh, what age did you f experience your first heartbreak, and what was that like? Um, yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tell absolutely. Me more. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I it's it's funny. I I I had this crush on a girl when I was uh -huh. 16. Uh-huh. And a lot of the songs I was writing off that first record that was unreleased were about this girl, right? And um silly high school crush and I ended up dating her when I was 19. We ended up started dating, and I still talk to her till this day. She's still my friend, but um, yeah, she just crushed me. Oh, she wow. just destroyed me. Yeah, yeah, when I was maybe 20, 21, we dated for a couple of years. Wow. Um, yeah, we did the whole long distance thing. She was going to school up in the Bay, and I was down here. And um, yeah, she absolutely crushed me for sure. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> and then you released a failed. Upward album from that, huh? Absolutely. That's or called, unreleased. Yeah, it's, um, there's that one. And then, you know, as I think about it, um, you know, the, my first record that came out for the Kings, for sure, there's a song on it called Song for Marguerite. You know, wow. It's, it was definite, I was very, like, 19, 20, huh. madly in love. When I'm writing, I'm not really trying to write. And when I'm trying to write, it never turns out the way I want it to be. And so I kind of have to be in this zone where... I'm just really accepting and the energy flow is really pure and you know when I get put in those situations where it's like no we got to do it for this reason you know to satisfy you know XYZ it just it never comes out the way it should it never comes out pure and then I don't want to actually even be you know supporting it because I don't believe in it you know so yeah. it's this weird process for me and so I have to really you know stay in a positive mindset and just keep an open mind you know, because as I work now, like sometimes I'm working with different artists, writing, doing some songwriting stuff, and it might not be exactly where I want to be, but I continue to grow mm -hmm. and just kind of have more of a, an open mindset these days as far as my writing abilities too. So, Got you know, it. just be more accepting, you know, yeah. of who I am and, and uh, what, you know, what the world is. So. so, I mean, you've been so close with your band members. Mm -hmm. and their family and yeah. extended family or just family yeah. um do you all have a style already that you are all comfortable with with each other or does that style evolve and what are the growing pains of that absolutely i mean i always try to grow you know for my writing i never want to do anything that's just subpar as mm -hmm. far as like my creativity i'm always trying to push the envelope Mm -hmm. And every, everyone else is in the group too, and mm -hmm. so um, that's why I feel so strong about this new record because we all really took it upon ourselves to to find our own space that we can approve upon. You know, because mm. as an artist, there's always room to grow. You know, there's of course you can get to a place where you can perform and you can do your normal functions, but there's always room to expand upon your creativity and yeah. your mindset, and so. That was what we, you know, took upon ourselves for this record was to really push ourselves individually um, with our styles. And absolutely, like our drummer Alex is an incredible rock drummer, but for this record, he's been listening to jazz and oh. he's been really pushing himself on the jazz aspect. And so that's opened a whole new aspect as far as you know the percussive elements in the, in the record. And um, same with my brother and uh, Ken, our guitar player. You know, he he's a punk rock guitar player and. He's been listening to a lot of Chuck Perry and mm -hmm. um, breaking it down into different, you know, Motown and 
and just a lot of different throwback styles. And so it's been really interesting working on this record, trying to find new ways to express what we already feel, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I think we really achieved it. You know, awesome. So. What are some uh, important topics uh, or important experiences mm -hmm. that drove the, the theme of, well, not the theme, but the songs mm -hmm. of this coming album? Absolutely. I mean, touring, mm -hmm. absolutely touring, getting out on the road and, and seeing everything for what it is, you know, in a, in a bigger mindset for us. And within that time, there was so much change within the world and our country and everything happening in society. And so there's definitely you know, a base root of change, you know, and progression mm -hmm. and understanding, you know, that everything might not be okay, but if we can figure out a way to actually come together instead of push each other away. And mm -hmm. um, there's definitely some understanding of political ties and, and emotions of just kind of freeing your mind and being more, you know, open. And so definitely just try to write about the world as I see it. Mm -hmm. and um, try to create just a picture where I can relate how I'm feeling with everything um, to everyone else that's listening to it. And hopefully that, you know, when they listen, everyone listens to this record, they can get that understanding that yeah. we can grow and that there's endless potential and um, that everything will be all right. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go a little deeper with the dynamics of your band. Yeah. Um, did you all have the same p social political views during the election? You all did. We did. Oh, okay. We did. That would have made for a very interesting um, topic. Yeah, okay. for sure. We were all on the same page. Okay. Um, uh, you know, we're not we're not supporters of Trump, and we definitely <laughs> want to make sure that people can just be open minded. And I feel like that's the it's not that I'm, um, I'm not like an anti-Trump uh, rallier, but yeah. I feel like it's important that everyone understands that, um, you know, we have to be open to seeing more positive future for all of us as far as where we stand in this life. And uh, I don't like the way things are going and yeah. we can do it better and okay. we can do it um, in a much more honest and open conversation and I feel like uh, it will be better you know we mm -hmm. could change we could change this world just by uniting you know were you touring during the election time um yeah did you see yeah. differences of opinion people Absolutely. who had their different opinions completely different than yours and Absolutely. what was that experience like having to listen and yeah absolutely I mean especially when you get in, you know, Oklahoma or mm -hmm. Texas, things are a little bit different. Um, mm -hmm. But I didn't, I, I've never been uh, extremely an activist about my political views. Mm -hmm. I've always just tried to preach um, just an understanding as far as just being aware of what's happening and not taking words for granted and not just listening to you know, whatever you're hearing on the media and taking as truth, you know, so mm -hmm. I feel like as we were traveling, we were definitely running into those situations. We're like, oh, you're from California, you know, you're probably not a Trump fan. Um, and we're like, of course we're not, but, uh, you know, it doesn't mean that we can't have an open conversation about how we can make this world better. Yeah. And so um, that's kind of the mindset we're in place. I try to take conversations as far as, you know, when it comes into you know, butting heads of, of views, I try to, you know, find a way that you can actually have that conversation to improve it. Because I feel like just throwing hard words around does not improve anyone's output or, you know, understanding of each other. So try more of a, a, a solid ground that we can communicate on. So. That's awesome. And um, when you go into, okay, your album that's coming out, mm -hmm. Uh, was there points where you addressed the angst, the chaos of Absolutely. our stuff? Okay. Absolutely. There's a couple songs in particular. Okay. Um, we were meeting, we actually had a meeting with an art director last night and we're talking about some music video concepts and there's this one called Wake Me Up. Mm. Um, 
that's really really speaks to me and it's about basically basically just opening your eyes to what's happening in front of you you know mm -hmm. and not being force fed you know bullshit you know that's it that's putting it you know constantly uh, just unraveling through social media and everything else and so it's just kind of more of a call to awakening mm -hmm. you know just to um, be aware of what's being said and what's going on and to just be true to you know who you are you know that's all that's just kind of my repeating understanding of, of the music and what we do is just kind of open your eyes you know and, and be aware and don't just be force-fed information yeah to take it as a grain of salt and do your information do your research you know and because yeah. um, without that you know you'll just be making rash decisions decisions and yeah. uh, that does not lead to progress yeah so what helps you ground you know uh, with the social media information wars that's going on what helps you ground um, writing mm -hmm. writing and um, playing music I mean, that's that's why I do it you know I wake up in the morning and that's all I think about is, is picking up my guitar and seeing what I can come up with you know in a new way so I've always just kind of turned to to writing music as my understanding of what makes me who I am so that's where I always go does it make you a better person after like I think so releasing all the anger I think so. <laughs> absolutely the tensions relieved okay tensions relieved. but sometimes not though it's interesting because oh, really? sometimes I get stirred up oh, you know? so wow. <laughs> it's interesting you know writing for me is always a process uh -huh. and um, it, it's always changing for me where do you think your music will take you and society in the next five ten years where do you want it to take you and the as far world? as my journey yeah where do you want your music to take people you personally and then also the world in general well i guess music for me has always been my i guess calling to find myself and so i'm always pursuing it and so i think you know within the next decade of of writing every day that I can actually come to, I guess, a calmer understanding of who I am, you know? Because um, we all change through our lives, and um, as we get older and mature, we're always kind of trying to readjust and, and find um, just a stability. And so I feel like for myself with my writing, I feel like I'd like to come to a place where, um, you know, I guess I just feel more, more comfortable within my own skin, you know? Like, you know, I, I feel like it's just growth, you know, for me, and I want to continue to grow, but just, I don't know, just in a way where uh, I can continue to express myself in a positive way. So, I just, on this continued path, and I think with, with others in my music, I hope to, I guess, just build a, a bond, you know, a stronger bond within the community, you know, within those that you know, are less fortunate within those that, you know, n could benefit from just a, a conversation, you know, about life and opportunity, you know, and I think music really does offer that and it gives people that ability to have a voice and, and to express themselves. And so I feel like it's, it'll be symbiotic with myself and those that enjoy our music that, um, you know, we all just grow together into finding one solid place that we can, uh, you know, be happy. And last question. Thank you, by the way, for being so generous with your time yeah, and answering course. these questions. Of course. Uh, what do you think is your your journey um, with pain of passion? What do you think the function of pain is for yourself? You know, and how does that lead to your passion? That's a great question. Yeah. Um, I think the function of pain is to let you know that you're alive. Mm. You know, it's really what pricks us and, and pushes us forward. You know, I, I know that 
I, I've experienced it as well, where you take pain and you, and you retreat within yourself, you know, and you can cast out. And that's okay for a time, you know, we all need healing, but it's within that where we find our true selves and that allows us to grow even brighter than we've seen our own, you know, futures. And so I feel like pain for me has enabled me to really dig into my true self and to really understand that I am alive and I can give this light and this energy to everyone that I experience and it fulfills me even more. Mm. Um, yeah, pain is, pain is as equal to happiness. You know, we, we need to have a, a good understanding of both to be around individual and um, you know, there's no reason to fear pain or to, you know, hide from it because it's just a part of personal growth and it makes us stronger, it makes us stronger individuals and, and in the end it just uh, creates the person that we've become. Yeah. yeah.